Alright, um, welcome back to another Henry Stickman video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to get all the bios in Escaping the Prison. So, let's start. Uh, so, of course, we start with Henry's bio. Yeah. He was Rupert Price and Dave Pampa. <laughs> right click to get their bio. Not really. I love this part. <laughs> Don't get your yeah, I hope so. You're already playing me. I don't mean Dave. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Dave is the best. Dave is the best. Here, probably in completing the mission in Thought of Civil Warfare, if you choose the good gents, she so you do just like so confident. Okay, so start by using that NRG drink because we'll get a bunch of bios for that. slowed it down so get blade, blade knife mannequin right click Dave Rupert again okay, throw Rupert in the trash and then there's some blunk and Kev Portley Portley's donut and then that's Ryan Goldman you don't have, you don't have to click on the donut but I did so I can't it's for achievements and we're only going for bios This is so funny. The teleporter. I'm gonna have to get some food. Only you get the fails with new bios in them. Jonas Nukin and Captain Rowan Canterbury. Rocket launcher. This is the next bio. This is another bio. Harold Johnson. Okay, now let's go to the sneaky escapist. Cell door, window is filled. Oh, there's no bios in that film. So, super. Click here to get bios, right click. Also, be sure to comment something in the comments. Just anything, you can comment anything. Then, stump lump in straight shooter. <laughs> And straight, yeah, that's his actual legal name. I think there's any with the belt of grenades. It's none. We go to the left. Interrupt a meeting. Dan Arter Arby. Oh, I have to do that again. I'm gonna do that again to get all the bios. So, John Barley. No, John, yeah, John, no, John Gritz, Jen Brun, John Saskatchewan, John Farm, John Barley, and Captain, uh, that's Captain Jeffrey Custard. And, uh, well, there's no more bios to get, so I'm just gonna go back to the map and go to, I'm gonna do the cell phone. Move my mask out over. So September 9th is actually the creative game football's birthday. Vladimir von Buren, Winston Davis. Felix White. No, that's Vladimir from Buren. The other one is Super Brown. Uh, the judge is Super Brown, sorry. Yeah, that's Super Brown, not Vladimir from Buren. It was Super Brown. This guy's bag. Long cut scene. And Trying to do it on my camera. How did they do it? It's simple. They didn't. There's gonna be a lot of uh, bios at the end of this cup scene. Hiding the bag at all. Who stuffed in there? Why this very witness? Huh? As you can see by the doctor's analysis, the defendant had taken quite the beating. I 
was in the bag. He was unconscious. This is absurd. The witness was attempting to dispose of the body. He left the defendant's bag, knowing he'd drive by it on the way back to the bank. When the witness and his partner passed the bag, he convinced his partner to throw the bag in with the other. I'm just looking at his lips. Why would he do that? So cool. Why dispose of the body, of course? There are millions of bags of money in that bank, and the witness knew it would take a long time before the victim was found. But unfortunately for the witness, the victim woke up and tried to escape from his tomb. He was arrested on the spot, and the witness got everything he wanted. It's Henry. This can't be happening to me. <laughs> okay, so now I have to focus and get a lot. Get some of the bios now. Interesting file. However, I'm now ready to deliver my book. I find the defendant, and you stick me. I have to get a bunch of bios now. No, no, I only got one of the bio. Okay, come on. Got check sands and that's it. Oh my goodness. Is, is that the bag the defendant hid in? Yes. But if there's one thing that's been bothering me, if the defendant really was hiding in the bag, then how did he tie the knot from the outside of the bag? What? If he was inside the bag, it'd be impossible for him to tie the knot on the outside. But then, how did he do it? It's simple. He didn't. What thought he was saying? He was saying my client wasn't hiding that bag at all. He was stuffed in there by this very witness. As you can see by the doctor's analysis, the defendant had been taken quite the beating. While he was in the bag, he was unconscious. This is absurd. The witness was attempting to dispose of the body. What does it say? Okay, you can't tell, tell what it says when you click, right click on someone's face. Bag, Here, you have this bio. It says by Owen. 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 But why is there a dot? Millions of bags of money. The witness knew it would take a long time before the victim was found. Unfortunately for the witness, the victim woke up and tried to escape from his tomb. He was arrested on the spot, and the witness got everything he wanted. Come back to haunt him now. He's getting me out into me. So I have to focus on getting all the bias. So let's check some minutes. There's Dane Sloyd and Steve Stevenson and Juno Grimpen. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, I have to get. Last time. It's the last time I had to do this. Is, is that the bag the defendant Yes, it's the bag the defendant yes. But there's one thing that's been bothering me. The defendant really was hiding in the bag, then how did he tie the knot from the outside of the bag? If he was inside the bag, it'd be impossible for him to tie the knot on the outside. But then how did he do it? It's simple. He didn't. What thought he was saying? He was saying my client wasn't hiding that bag at all. He was stuffed in there by this very witness. As you can see by the doctor's analysis, the defendant had taken quite the beating. I was in the bag. He was unconscious. This is absurd. The witness was attempting to dispose of the body. He left the defendant in the bag, knowing he'd drive by it on the way back to the bank. When the witness and his partner passed the bag, he convinced his partner to throw the bag in with the other. But, but why would he do that? Why dispose of the body, of course? There are millions of bags of money in that bank, and the witness knew it would take a long time before the victim was found. But unfortunately for the witness, the victim woke up and tried to escape from his tomb. He was arrested on the spot, and the witness got everything he wanted. Oh, this is the last time we're going to see this cut scene. It can't be happening to me. It can't be happening to me. <laughs> why, why does his mouth go over the mustache? And, and beard. I find the defendant. Can you stick me? Okay. 
I think I got all the bass in there, Finally. Now we can go to BBL. Pass here has a bunch of bios. Oh, not yet. Not yet. I got 17 of that to get right now. Yeah, I got all the bios. So it's Ungus Bungus, Pete Sound, Sally Q. Gary Gray and yeah. Oh, oh, unknown Hendrix. I think Tom Hadley and Bert Swin, maybe. sound I think. What? I clicked it. I clicked it. <laughs> it's like what the heck? It's Captain Ed Roberts. Maybe not. Maybe I already got Captain Ed Roberts. Huh. No, maybe this piece of, uh, I need to get on. <laughs> See if I got all the bios. I didn't get all the bios. Did was that super known person again? Okay. Now I still have to get all the bios. I got all the bios. Okay, so so yeah, all that. So this Henry Schumann after. After arrested for attending the burglary bank, he now sits in the Red Mesa Penitentiary. Rupert Price. He's been on the force for nearly eight years. He joined the police academy right out of high school. Three fanboys about it. He's new to the force and eager to do a good job. Harold Johnson. He works as the prison janitor, as the prison jan prison's janitor, but he also enjoys doing the maintenance work. Blade Knife Man McGee, serving multiple life sentences, <laughs> multiple life sentences, for multiple counts of murder. He gave himself the name, knife, the nickname Knife Man, but his name was Blade, like, come on. Kill Portly. He only became a cop because he knows that cops eat donuts, and he loves donuts. You won't catch him doing much police work. Stump Lump. He was beat up a lot as a child because of name, for obvious reasons. Ryan Goldman. Goldman, uh, Red Basic Penitentiary's Employee of the Month for the month of June. Oh, I don't really see it. I feel like it's Carlos Burdett. Um, he works a desk job at the prison. He prefers it over going into a dangerous field. Straight shooter. Is it little eight? Little, literal eight. <laughs> Legally changes his name to Straight Shooter. A shooter. Uh, he, spot, he spits hot fire and raps mad lyrics. Respect. Jen Brown, one of the administrators of the prison. She keeps it running in decent condition. John Farn, rookie to the team. This is the first meeting he's ever attended. John Goods, just got back from breaking up a fight between two inmates. It didn't go so well. John, Sus John Saskatchewan. John Saskatchewan. He joined the police force for his actions, but they've stuck him behind the desk. And that's how you get someone flopping on the table. <laughs> 
in Saskatchewan, it's play on the uh, Canadian province, Saskatchewan, but it's spelled differently. John Barley fell out of firearms training three times. He's technically not allowed his weapons outside of the shooting range. Weapon. Captain Jeffrey Custard. 30 years ago, a janitor threw out his lunch. He's held a grudge against janitors ever since. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the, that's the guy who said janitors don't count. Shut up, janitor. You won't count. Wait, where is the janitor? None of these. None of the John. None of the John. None of the John's John or Jim. Okay. Of course, Captain Jeffrey. Jonas Nugan. He's quickly moving up the ranks. Just need to pass that marksman exam. Captain Nolan Canterbury. Man in charge of the office, all, all officer trainer at Red Mesa. Known to be strict, very strict. Unknown Hendricks. Always sleeping on the job. Nobody knows his first name. Pete Sound. Notor notor oh, ask Pete Sound. Notorious for taking food that isn't, that isn't his from the employee fridge. Sally Q. She often gets confused with someone else, which is strange because she doesn't even have red uh, have red hair. Person that she like in the in the flash version, she everyone thought that she was Ellie because she had red hair in the flash version. Ellie has red hair. From playing the complex, so but both changed it so you get to be blonde. Gary Gray. Constantly put on evidence duty is his favorite job. Ungus Bumus. Met Harvey many, many, many years ago. Felix White sees the most prominent defense attorney. He works hard to ensure innocent people are not put away. Hubert Brown, one of the city judges. It's very difficult to tell him apart from other judges in the city. Vladimir Van Buren, nemesis to Mr. White, excluding hockey and his ability to put Kenwell's away. It's often becomes his downfall. Winston Davis, he's been disposed due to his involvement in the bank. The bank is the, the, the is what the bank is called, the bank break it. The, the bank's break it. Either way, he won't go be going back to his old job anytime soon. Chuck Sammons, he works at Sandwich City and enjoys a free sandwich for lunch every day. Yay. Good for him. Juno Griffith, he has received jury duty 27 times this year. This can make even the most cheery man feel good. But look, look, doesn't it look like he's smiling? Okay, let's see it. Looks like a smile. Whatever. Dean Sloyd, hailing from uh, hailing from a foreign foreign country, this is the first time in this, this is the first time in a big city. This was Steve Stevens. Oh, that was Stevenson. Stevens. Oops. Grinds away at his work office daily. He dreams of owning a pizza shop. I have his office job daily. Okay. Yeah. Bertson, he's been on the force for six, force for six years and now, uh, six years now, and uh, yet still they surprise him. Tom Hardley, he, t he takes his job very seriously. He never seems to take the sunglasses off. Captain Ed Roberts, the police chief here at Red Mesa. He runs a slight tight. He runs a tight ship and expects the best of from all of his cat, cadets, cadets, whatever. Timothy Cog. Fairly new to the force, does not handle pressure wear. Well, <laughs> Michael Benz joined the force at the same time as his best friend. He's a clean shaven one. Sean Sean, this is his first day back from a nice vacation. You're going to get Matthew Flex. He joined the force at the same time as his best friend. He has a goatee. And Matthew Flexer and Michael Benz are basically the same person. Just one has a good one doesn't. Okay, um, well, that's it. See, got all. Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, that's it. Let's see. 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 Let's